Speaking of manning up, I got a couple of clips from a TV show that I've been watching like all this month. Um, Lock Up Raw on NBC. You know, I love these crime shows. Y'all know I like the show 48, the first 48 on A&E. That's my favorite show. And I, I watch a lot of these crime shows and prison shows. Because I'm just amazed at how dumb some niggas are out there. Some of the dumbass crimes that niggas commit. I'm, I'm simply amazed by it. But for all you thug ass dudes, I want to I play a clip for all you young cats out there who want to get into the thugging game. Play a clips, play a couple of clips about what goes on in prison. Let me turn this parliament down. I've been bumping this parliament. Here's a couple of clips from the show um, Lock Up Sinbees. And it talks about some of the gay shit that goes on in prison. And I have another clip from just some crazy ass white boys. But here's a clip of these dudes. It's two thug ass looking dudes. One dude looked like a queen now. But a lot of dudes who go to jail don't think that they're queens. I don't think they're gay if they fuck another dude. I just want to give you an example of the mentality of niggas in jail. Check very, this out. Very frustrating and uncomfortable, especially if that's something that you really want to do because you, you have to try to beat the police and inmates. And what I mean by that is it's done quick and quietly. He's talking about sex with another prisoner. They have sex quick and quietly. Keith Mason, who goes by the name Precious, and this nigga looks a hot mess. He ain't precious worth a damn. Is a divorced former pastor serving a life term for robbery and aggravated assault. Marquise Nobles is serving 15 years for robbery and kidnapping. And this Marquise nigga looks like your regular thug ass nigga. He's supposed to be straight. For the past six years, the two men have enjoyed a relationship behind bars. He had a shy innocence when I first met him. So I think that was another part that really attracted me to him. But by the same aspect, I, I really fell in love with him. Every morning, Precious gets coffee for Marquise. He sews for him and keeps their area clean. In prison terms, Marquise and Precious are man and wife. <laughs> Here you go, man. I got on my band and his. That's mine, that's his. I love him, and uh, if I could marry him in the state of Alabama, I would. I got his name on me, right there. Come on, baby. While Precious and Marquise freely... Now, this nigga is giving the other dude a foot massage. It's, it's gross as hell, and you can see this on YouTube. Um, it says MSNBC lock up inside Holman Correctional Facility, and you can see this shit on YouTube. It's fucking disgusting. He admits to having a sexual relationship in prison, Marquise says he prefers women. I'm in prison. There's no women in here, but there are men that want to be women, so you know, I have to deal with it while I'm in here. I'm straight. I mean, I like, I like feminine men, so... You See, this is the logic that, that kills me. This nigga's talking about he's straight having sex with a dude in prison. You know, however you want to look at it, as you call it, being a homosexual, you being gay, you know, everybody had a different word, but as far as in here, you know, he's a woman and I'm a man. And you ladies, y'all, that's that's what you like, ladies, right? All you, you hood browns, y'all like them quote-unquote thugs? Well, that's what your thug is doing in prison. He's getting a foot massage from Precious. Coming out, bringing your punk-ass AIDS. Ridiculous, man. Anyway, here's another clip I want to play by this crazy ass white dude. And this motherfucker didn't kill the prison guard. He didn't kill all types of folks. He's crazy as cat shit. And this one of those white boys who don't fuck around. These Alabama white boys. Because I grew up with these cats. I lived in Alabama. And some of them motherfuckers don't fuck around. Check this out. I killed somebody over a carton of cigarettes. You know, it's not a carton of cigarettes. That's, that may be the catalyst that leads to something, but if uh, if somebody owes me a, a a soda pop and they come to me and say, "Hey man, uh, I need to get that soda pop you owe me," and I spit in their face and talk to them like they a bitch or something, you know, and then they <laughs> kill me, whose fault is it? It wasn't about the soda pop no more. You know, on the street, yeah, you call the police and put a stop to that. What do you? 
and he looks every bit as crazy as he sounds. What are you doing here? I tell you what you do. You go get you a knife and you stab that son of a bitch and you say you ain't taking nothing else. You know, that's the end of that. Here's what happens when you come to take something from me. And he mean that shit. 98% of these son of a bitches in here ought to be taken out somewhere and shot in the back of the head. And maybe maybe I'm, not, I'm part of that 98%. If y'all hear a white boy say, son of a bitch, you better head for the hills, goddammit. Because he don't around. And there's one more clip I want to play by this dude. Now, audio is kind of messed up. The audio isn't too good, but you can kind of hear it. And this dude is talking about how much he like... <laughs> uh, the, he, he's talking about the importance of booty in prison. But the audio is a little messed up, so bear with me with the audio. And this is another clip from Lock Up Raw on MSNBC. All of them all of them got sexual desire, so what are they going to do? We won't pay them to have them work. They're going to have to get somebody going to have to give us some money. And it ain't just as simple. <laughs> <laughs> the most uh, memorable story is... He said, basically, he said somebody's going to have to give up some booty. And that's the producer talking right now. Booty at in a maximum security penitentiary. And he went on about it and on about it. In his prison, booty. Booty was uh, more important than food. Booty. A man's butt. It was more important. I'm sorry. It was more booty. Having some booty was more important than drinking wine. I like booty. Just <laughs> to tell our crew. That nigga said, I like booty. So all you thug ass niggas, that's what's gonna happen. That's where you gonna go. To the I like booty dude. And this dude don't look like a queen. These dudes don't look like queens. These are regular thug ass looking dudes. Who don't give a shit. And ladies, that's what y'all like, right? Let me put my music back on. Anyway, I digress. I just wanted to play some of those clips for my thugs and players out there. Anyway, let's get into some good game today. I got an email from a gentleman. And he was saying to me, Tariq, I know you talk about tricking and buying women stuff and giving them money for bills, but what about taking a woman out on a date? Isn't that a form of tricking? What if you just have a lot of money? Like they say, it ain't tricking if you got it. If you have a lot of money, what's wrong with buying women drinks? What's wrong with kicking a woman down a few dollars every now and then if you have the money? Can you please clarify what is tricking and what is not tricking? Okay. In the, in the rap community, you know, there's a song that came out about five, six years ago. It ain't tricking if you got it, blah, blah, blah. Fuck that. Tricking is tricking. Whether you have a hundred million or a hundred bucks, tricking is tricking. If a woman walks away with you or walks away from you before or after a sexual experience with something of value, that's basically a form of tricking. See, a lot of cats out here are tricking and they're trying to find ways to justify it because they kind of know it's fucked up. See, tricking back in the day and even now it was something negative. It showed a lack of game. Nowadays, cats try to make tricking seem kind of fly or making it rain. I go to the club, I make it rain on the bitch. Nigga, that shit is tricking. Making it rain is corny. It shows a lack of game. 
niggas are trying to justify tricking. Oh, it ain't tricking if you got it. And I'm the big baller. I just throw money around like that. Nigga, you're using money to compensate for a lack of gain. Nigga, the only thing you're supposed to throw up in the club are verbs, nouns, and adjectives. That should be good enough. It is tricking, and I got it. Tricking is tricking. Taking a woman on a date, that's not tricking because you're getting something out of the deal too. It's all about the way you play it. If you invite somebody out to a restaurant and say, look, there's a nice restaurant that I like, why don't you join me? That's not tricking because you're both getting something out of it. You dig? So that's not really tricking. You're both getting something out the deal. If you go to a movie, you're both getting something out the deal. You feel what I'm saying? Now, giving a motherfucker some rent money where she gets something out the deal and all you get is a kiss or a little poon tang, that's tricking. Now, if you pay a female's rent or help her out with her rent and she helps you out with your rent, she brings some finances to the table too. That's not tricking because there's an even exchange. But if the woman is getting something of financial value and all you're getting is sexual gratification or the possibility of sexual gratification, that is tricking. Tricking is tricking is tricking. And there's a lot of tricking going on in the news with the governor of New York. This fool, I won't say fool because I I popped my collar to the girl. He was tricking with a high-priced call girl. And I popped my collar to her. Because she got the right rate. He wanted her to kick it all night. She got like four grand, five grand, and that's how you hustle. So again, I can't be mad at her. I popped my collar to her. And when you're a politician and when you're a high public figure, you know, a lot of that money, you're paying for discretion. You're paying for a motherfucker to keep their mouth shut. A lot of folks are like, damn, that was a lot of money. But no, you don't want to. If you trick it, you ain't trying to go to no hundred dollar hole because you're going to go tell all your business. Hotline, who's calling? What's up, Tyree? What's going on, player? Where you calling from? Savannah, Georgia. All right, what's your name, man? Kevin. All right, what's on your mind, player? Man, I'm trying to get on the Savannah girls. Man, pose on every crazy man. Man, the Savannah—that's the military spot, right? Yeah. I've been to Savannah, man, a long time ago. Nigga, we had them broads lined up at the hotel room. All of them were married too. All of them uh-huh. motherfuckers were married. Their husbands were off in the military, and they were throwing pussy like cottage cheese. They were throwing pussy, nigga. What's the vibe down there like now? Right now, man, I, you know, I'll holler at the girls here and there, but they don't, man, you know, you got to pay me and all this other shit. You know Hell what I'm no. Hell no. How come you don't drive up to Atlanta? <laughs> My car old, man. <laughs> <laughs> My car old, man. How far is Atlanta from Savannah? It wasn't that far if I, as, as I remember. How far is that? I think it's like three and a half hours. Is that far? Yeah. Damn, I, I forgot because I was hanging out with some rapper friends back in the day, and I was on tour with them, just hanging out, and we were just going to all types of spots. I, I, I didn't know it was that far from Atlanta though. But the the women mm. were cool down there. They were they were just on some scandalous shit with their husbands, but they were cooperative. Um, so what's some good advice, man? Um, you need to get out of Savannah, man. Um, get you, go up to Atlanta, dude. You like right by Atlanta. And shit, Atlanta, you get pussy by accident in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? I heard you on the other shows you talk about Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta's the shit, man. I lived in Atlanta for three years. I I know the vibe has changed now because I lived in Atlanta in the 90s. But, you know, but the females are still cooperative, man. So get your car right, man. How old are you? I'm 20. 20? Yeah. Okay, I can understand that. But get your car right, man. Get your car game together. 
so you can drive and get a little mobile, man. Those Atlanta females, they'll come to visit you. Shit, it's 12 to 1 in Atlanta. 12 females to every one dude. Get your ass up there to Atlanta, man. All right, All right player. Shit. You buy Atlanta talking about the females are fucked up in Savannah. Shit. Make that three-hour drive, drive, dude. Make that three-hour drive. Atlanta females are cooperative. Nigga, Atlanta... I love Atlanta. I got to get back down. I've been saying that forever. I swear you get pussy by accident in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta one time, dude. And we were staying at a hotel. And we had a whole bunch of girls in, in one room. We had rooms all over the spot. We had a bunch of girls in one room. I'm walking to the hallway to get a soda. A girl comes snatch me and pulls me in her room and tries to perform oral relations on me. She was a fine chick, too. But the shit kind of scared me, so I kind of backed off. But Atlanta was wide open like that back in the day. What's up, man? Mac Lessons Radio Show is calling. Hello? Let's get this call. Mac Lessons Radio, who's calling? What's up, man? This is Brett from Miami. Hey, man. What's going on with you, player? Chill it, man. Chill it. I got to... Yeah. Go ahead. Yo, is, is it cool to, like, tell female dreams out here? Because a lot of females out here... Into the relationships, so okay. I mean, I'm a player. What's that? Try to be true to the game, but again, the females they want the relationships. Is it cool, like you know, what I'm saying like selling things and stuff? No, I mean, I, I think honesty is always the best policy, man. If you don't want a relationship, man, don't tell them that. They'll say what they want, but that don't mean you have to deliver or tell them that you're going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Women, they they want the stars, moon, and the sun, but you don't promise them that just to get some ass. You just let them know that, you know, you're doing you. You're going to deal with them the way you want to deal with them at the time. And that alleviates a lot of confusion and resentment. Because if you start selling women dreams, they'll start doing little scandalous shit behind your back and get you caught up in a twist. So you don't even want to put that All energy right. out there. You feel me? All right, yeah. I, okay, I'll be, I be honest with them. I'll be honest with them. Oh, huh? Yeah, I'm here. I'm listening to you. Okay, I'll be honest with them. The thing about being honest with them, let's be honest with them. They can accept that temporarily. They looking for a nigga, you know what I'm saying? They feel you. They don't want you to be the nigga. They be like, okay, since you're a nigga for a relationship, I'm gone. Yeah, but they'll accept honesty temporarily, but they'll accept a lie temporarily too because you can't lie forever. You know what I'm saying? You can't keep... I ain't lying. Yeah, you can't see it keep saying, I'm going to be your man, I'm going to be your man, and it never pops off. So there's going to be a lot of resentment there. I always believe on leaving with good terms on every female I deal with. You know what I'm saying? If I'm not going to be in a relationship with her, we're going to still be on some good motherfucking terms. You dig? So right. on- honesty is just the best policy, man. You keep the honesty there, the respect level will be there. They'll respect that. And respect is always the best policy. You feel me? Okay. I right, th- Thanks, player. For sure. But like I said, man, about tricking. Tricking is tricking. Keep your money in your pocket, nigga. Tricking is tricking. It is tricking, no matter if you have it. I got it, and I ain't tricking. And there's another thing that men are tricking with nowadays, and brothers think it's cool, using drugs as a means of tricking. That's tricking. When a female comes over and you got free weed for her, that is tricking because that's something of value. Drugs are something of value. Drugs are good as money to some females. And a lot of females, they get women. And and there's a lot of weed head ass girls out there. I talk about this a lot. We have a whole weed head female generation out here. A lot of dudes get these women, they offer them drugs. They offer them free weed, free drink, free coke, free ecstasy. And that's how you get pussy. By getting weed heads supporting their habits for free. That's tricking, fellas. I'm sorry. That is tricking. There's women out here do all types of shit for weed. They do all types of shit for coke. They do all types of shit for free drugs. That is tricking. I've never gotten a woman high in my life. Never, never, never. 
Because I don't even like those kind of females. I don't even like women who get high. They're nasty to me. But fellas, that is tricking. I'm sorry. I hate to bust your bubble. But inviting a female over to smoke with you. So you can hit it. That's tricking. So it is tricking if you got it. Keep your goddamn money in your pocket. 